Hey everyone, how are you all doing? Welcome to this video. Um, sit back, relax. This is going to be a really interesting one. Probably one of the most important videos that I could react to or you know talk about. Um, regarding copyright for this video, dude, if you're here, great. It might be taken down. I'm not sure, but uh, under my understanding of copyright law, if you're reacting to something and talking about it, uh, like a news anchor or someone would, then it falls under fair use. But that being said, you never know with this stuff. So. In that case, if that happens, please go to Disney Plus, go to the uh, um, what is it? Disney Gallery, Mandalorian, and Episode 2. The last six or seven minutes, Dave Filoni will be talking about something that will enlighten literally everyone. And I wish that every Star Wars fan could watch that little excerpt from that, which we're going to watch here and react to it. And I'm going to be pausing it in between and talking about different things that he's talking about and going off my own, my own theories and tangents. But I truly believe that that Dave Filoni is the most brilliant man when it comes to following George Lucas's story and what he wanted because he is the true apprentice to Dave. So have your pens and pencils ready. Take notes. Uh, this is uh, this is this is really, really most eloquent um, discussion I've ever heard about Star Wars, the prequels and leading into episode six and uh, encapsulating it fully in in what Star Wars really is. So here we go. He's talking about the prequels first off. And again, this is episode two of Disney Gallery's Mando behind the scenes or some making of. And it's the last six or seven minutes. I thought we're almost an impossible task. How do you tell the story that we've all grown up with imagining who Anakin Skywalker was? You saw so many things in Phantom Menace that you just imagined like the Jedi Council and none of it really was what I had expected. But I know now that that's just like how creative George is. Like he just sees it differently and he's laying it down and I love the lightsaber fight with Darth Maul, not because it's a lightsaber fight, but because George is so good at crafting why that fight's important mm. every this, time. This is crazy. Like, you know, the Obi-Wan Darth Vader fight isn't like the most wonderfully staged necessarily combat that you're ever gonna see, but there's so much at stake. It's so meaningful when Obi-Wan dies that we all feel like Luke. In Phantom Menace, you're watching these two Jedi in their prime fight this evil villain. Maul couldn't be more obviously the villain. He's designed to look evil. And he is evil, and he just expresses that from his face all the way out to the type of lightsaber he fights with. What's at stake is really how Anakin's going to turn out. This is the because coolest Qui -Gon part. Qui-Gon is different than the rest of the Jedi, and you get that in the movie. And Qui-Gon is fighting because he knows he's the father that Anakin needs. Because Qui-Gon hasn't given up on the fact that Jedi are supposed to actually care and, and love, and that that's not a bad thing. The rest of the Jedi are so detached, and they've become so political that they've really lost their way. Mm -hmm. And Yoda starts to see that in the second film. But Qui-Gon is ahead of them all. And that's why he's not part of the council. So he's fighting for Anakin. And that's why it's the duel of the fates. It's the fate of this child. And depending on how this fight goes, what the hell, dude? Anakin is gonna his life's gonna be dramatically different. So Qui-Gon loses, of course. Isn't that cr that I never knew duel of the fates meant the fate of this child, meant the fate of Anakin Skywalker. That like when I saw that, I watched this over the weekend, and I was just like just sitting there dumbfounded. I'm like, holy crap, this is amazing. Like, they really thought about literally this, like, George George thought about literally everything, of course. And I feel like it's something so rare today. So, Duel of the Fates, you know, naming the song that, that John Williams made, you know, da -da 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 -da, that is really about Anakin. So, it's like that battle is the most important battle in all of Star Wars. And then he's going to tie it into Return of the Jedi at the very end as well. So, we can see that if Qui-Gon... Plain and simple, in canon, I, I believe now, if, if Dave is saying it, um, it's as good as coming from George's mouth, pretty much, for me. If Qui-Gon had survived and trained Anakin, then Vader would have never been created, the galaxy would have never turned to turmoil and been destroyed, because Anakin would have had the father figure that he needed. So the father figure, because he knew what it meant to take this kid away from his mother when he had an attachment, and he's left with Obi-Wan. Obi-Wan trains Anakin at first out of a promise he makes to Qui-Gon, not because he cares about him. It's true. When they get Anakin, when they find him on Tatooine, he says, why do I feel like we've found another useless life form? He's comparing Anakin to Jar Jar. Excuse me. And he's saying, this is a waste of our time. Why are we doing this? Why do you see importance in these creatures like Jar Jar Binks and this 10-year-old boy? This is useless. So. He's a brother to Anakin eventually, but he's not a father figure. Mm. And that's herein is where 
the entire problem lies in Star Wars, where Obi Wan was basically trying to play the father, but he never truly cared for Anakin the way Qui Gon did. He merely was just doing a favor to his old master. He never really cared for the child. And if you do remember in episode one, he says, why do I feel like we found another useless life form? He's talking about a 10-year-old kid, a 9-year-old kid. Like, you, you can see now where everything has gone awry. That's, that's a failing for Anakin. He doesn't have the, the family that he needs. He loses his mother in the next film. He fails on this. And losing his mother, I think, was Obi-Wan's fault. And, and he blamed Obi-Wan for that in the Attack of the Clones book because... He starts talking about how he's he should have been stronger, he could have learned more, but also because if you remember in Attack of the Clones, he was talking about how he has dreams of his mother dying, and Obi-Wan just kind of like thwarts them away and be like, oh, we must be mindful of the living force. And like, we just shouldn't even worry about that stuff, just, you know, detach yourself from everything, be mindful of your thoughts, all that. And he just kind of ignores him, and then sure enough, his mother dies. So Anakin always blamed him for that, and I made a video about that too promise that he made mother i will come back and save you so he's left completely vulnerable and star wars ultimately is about family so that moment in that movie which a lot of people i think diminish into just all oh, just a cool lightsaber fight but it's it's everything that the entire three films of the prequels hangs on is that one particular fight and maul serves his purpose and at that point died before george may bring him back but he died and that's showing you again how the emperor is completely self-serving he doesn't care he's just a tool and he's using people and now he's going to use this child. That follows all the way through to the line which terrified me as a kid when the Emperor tells Luke, you like your father are now mine. And the idea when I was a little kid watching that movie of some evil person possessing my father, making him do things or making him be evil was, was terrifying. That was like a, a thought that was horrible. Also, it's amazing when you watch Return of the Jedi that Luke has never done anything that I would call it like he's a bad character. He has like a tendency to be dark. And a lot of people wanted Anakin, oh, he should have been darker as a character. It's not true at all. I, I believe Luke would turn to the dark side in Return of the Jedi. I believe that was on the table. I believe that he would kill the Emperor. And because of the way George arranges the story, I knew that was the wrong thing to do. When he's saying, you know, you want your weapon, you know, strike me down, I am defenseless. He wants him to give into his anger. He wants him to give in his hate and, and the fear, the structure that George has laid out in all the movies. So I almost feel like at this point, I just thought of something now. Uh, so in the in the novel, it explains that um, in the episode nine novel, it explains that Palpatine wanted Luke to strike him down so that he could fulfill the basically do the thing that Ray was going to do to him. But now it seems like Dave Filoni is, you know, given the, the true explanation, which was what George's was. Because I feel like they they kind of change things now, um, which was that he wanted, as originally stated, he wanted Luke to strike him down and give in to his anger. Because if he did that, then his journey to the dark side would be complete. Because once you you taste that, you take that the sip of the hate hate hater side, the darker side, uh, just like Anakin did when he killed the Tuscans, forever will it dominate your destiny. It is coming to fruition now, and the only thing that's going to save him is not his connection to the Force. It's not the powers he's learned. It's not all these things that are an advantage to him. That's gotten him to the table. But what saves Luke is his ability to look at all that and look at his father and say, no, I'm going to throw away this weapon. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to let that go and be selfless. And, and he says, you know, I am a Jedi like my father before me. But what he's really saying and why we connect, I connect so powerfully to it is like he's saying, I love my father. And there's nothing you can do that's going to change that. And the, the Emperor can't understand that connection. Why wouldn't you take some after the power of the galaxy? Why wouldn't you take this? And Anakin then in that moment has to decide to be the father that he's never had. He has to give up all the power of the galaxy and save his son. Isn't that amazing? So he, at that moment he realizes he has to be Qui-Gon. Like it, it literally comes full circle. Like it, it makes me emotional just talking about it. Cause it's like... I, I didn't I didn't even dude like I'm getting emotional man I didn't even think of this you know it's and and that's the selfless act really that he cool. doesn't return for his son and that's what saves him in turn so the the son said the father father said the son and it works out perfectly and I draw that line all the way from Phantom Menace to Jedi that's the story of Star Wars Everything so when he pops else, the helmet you're saying when he pops the helmet off in that moment was part of the yeah the it's faded arc it's all part of the fader it's all part of like 
why it works and why we care. It's not about X wings. It's not about all these the things we decorate Star Wars in. It's important. It's part of the genius of it. But we soulfully react like we don't just want an action movie. We want to feel uplifted. And and Star Wars is an adventure that makes you feel good. You know, it makes makes me feel like wow. I I want to be a part of that. So that's what that's what I always go back to with Star Wars is this selfless act and this family dynamic which is so important to George so important to the foundation of Star Wars that's in us and what I like about it is it's, it is really saying there is a lot of hope out there that we fundamentally want to be good people that we can all be driven to do terrible things but that we can persevere uh, through selfless action so George has this hopeful story and it's something that he's reiterated most times I've seen him uh, you know after we've been making things uh, without them is remember to make these stories hopeful. Mm. Remember to give that to kids because they really need it. And so that's, that's just something to keep in mind. Did I bring us down? So, um, yeah, so I mean that, I, I don't even have anything, anything to say after that, man. I think George or, or Dave is just such a humble and, and talented person and, uh, I hope he's, you know, going to be in charge of all the creative decisions going forward. So I think he's really the man behind everything, and uh, he should, he should, he should, he should be the guy. You know, um, I, I, I'm trying to choose my words wisely here um, without being negative, but um, he, he's the he's the chosen one. You know, I think he really understands Star Wars, and I think he really gets it, and I think he really knows where the story should go and that's because he was the apprentice to george lucas you know it's funny enough he really the george is the the sith master and and dave is the apprentice you know or the jedi master and dave is the the padawan and now that george has you know stepped away from it i think dave is really the guy to step up to the plate and i'm glad he's you know getting all these opportunities to really show how talented he is and how much he really gets this because um you guys should go watch the whole all all the the two episodes that are up there, and I I think they're gonna release more, um, the Disney Gallery Mando behind the scenes or something like that, and it's really cool because it shows, you know, Dave even talks about like oh, so much more th stuff in there. This is only six minutes of like a two episodic thing, which are like each thirty minutes long, and he talks about how when he got the job to work for Luke work at Lucasfilm, he <laughs> thought it was a prank and he didn't really understand that this is you know a real call so and bef it explains that before that you know before he was even part of lucasfilm he was just a major star wars fan this was when revenge of the sith was coming out and he was just a, a giant fan of star wars so this has been part of him since he was a little kid and the fact that he's now in this position of quote unquote power uh at lucasfilm it's beautiful to me because it's like i couldn't have imagined someone more deserving you know he reminds me of any star wars fan any true genuine star wars fan uh since they were little kids and you know like myself like you guys you know all you guys watching here over six thousand of you what the heck that's crazy um so i, I really think that if qui-gon had been had won that duel and had been the father to anakin the father that he needed that none of this would have happened i think obi-wan one reason i never was too crazy about obi-wan was because he was so by the book and anakin didn't need that he needed someone you know anakin came in there not by the book he didn't come in there as a little baby youngling he came in there as a young boy and this of course was forbidden to do at the jedi council you can't come in there when you're older because you formed attachments he needed someone who wasn't as by the book as the council was akin to anakin's case because anakin had formed attachments qui-gon had felt that Jedi can still show compassion. They can still form attachments, but not join the dark side if those attachments go right. Now there is a can there's a legends I can't there's a legends comic where Qui Gon almost teeters on the dark side because his girlfriend dies, tall, and uh, it's a really interesting comic. I've covered it before, I believe. But that being said, Qui Gon was I don't want to say gray Jedi, but he is kind of the in between almost. He is that Jedi, but he believes in the true core values of the Jedi and isn't really overrun by politics and all of this garbage that the Jedi have become corrupt by. Corrupted by. So Qui-Gon was the father that Anakin needed 
if Anakin had gone to Qui-Gon saying that, hey, my mother is dying or whatever, have these dreams, I'm sure Qui-Gon would have gone back to Tatooine with him and helped him find her. She would have been alive. He would have praised Qui-Gon and his Jedi teachings, and he never would have been coaxed into the dark side by Darth Sidious, by Palpatine. The whole thing would have been foiled, and Dooku would have still had Qui-Gon there, and he still would have been able to have that link between the Separatists and the Jedi. And they would have maybe formed an alliance, or they would have mediated or something. It would have been different. It would have been completely different, and I think that if Qui-Gon hadn't lost, and the reason he lost was because, well, there are lots of reasons. I made a video about it, too. He was just older. He was just much older at that age, and Darth Maul was this young Sith that was just ready to kill. And he did kill. He'd killed almost two Jedi, a Jedi Master and a Jedi Padawan. It was just his hubris in the end that made him lose. He was arrogant, and he was just playing around with Obi-Wan. He was playing with his food kind of thing, like, I'm so much better than you. And he didn't anticipate that Obi-Wan could do this. Anyways, in the end, it's so cool to finally see this come out of Dave Floney's mouth that the duel of the fates is the, the, fa it's the duel of this child, is the outcome of Anakin Skywalker, of the Chosen One. That, to me, is the most interesting thing I could have ever heard about. And it's, it's cool that we're still learning stuff about Star Wars to this day because it's, it's revolutionary, man. It's just it's totally different. It's, it's something we never would have expected, and it's a surprise to be sure, you know. I hope to one day be able to talk to Dave or, or at, the, at the very least, I just hope that he will continue his journey at Lucasfilm and, and rise up in, in higher ranks or whatever, whatever, whatever rank he needs to be able to continue to do what he's doing, you know, and, you know, not have people uh, tell him what to do. Because I think he is a very creative person. I think he understands Star Wars and he learned Star Wars from the main man himself, George. So he should have full reign. He should have complete control to be able to do what he wants to do because he's trusted. And obviously the proof is in the pudding because he's making great content, he's making great episodes and shows. And I can't wait until he makes an actual movie. I think that's going to be the next step for him. I, if he you know, so chooses. But I think he'd excel at anything he touches at Lucasfilm. So... What's going on with you guys? Let's uh, talk about some super chats here. Um, I'd love to recreate the fan fiction of what if Qui-Gon saved, what if Qui-Gon uh, trained Anakin because in my part three of that, or my, my two parts, how many parts there are, I kind of went off on like a totally weird tangent where like Obi-Wan turns to the dark side and it was just strange. So I want to go back and redo it and make it more true to the story of what would actually happen. It would probably just be a one-parter. That being said, there is a fan fiction coming tomorrow. Uh, that I want you guys to watch. It's it's like back in the old days. This is like going old school style. So I hope you'll enjoy it. Um, looking forward to this, Charlie says. Right, me too. And uh, dude, go watch the full documentary. There's two episodes. Maybe there's going to be more. This guy knows what Star Wars is and should at least be a consultant on any project moving forward. Absolutely. He should be the George Lucas of Star Wars now. Dark Defender, everyone spam hello there. Ironic, Disney clearly got away from what Star Wars is, and Dave Filoni just told us why Disney Star Wars sucks so bad. Uh, you know what? I don't think there is a... I don't know if there's a Disney Star Wars or if there's just... Um, you know, someone from Lucasfilm emailed me a while ago, or they claimed to at least have been working at Lucasfilm since George, you know, was there, and, and through the, the, the Disney purge, he called it, when everyone got fired, apparently. And he said that everything really changed after it was sold. Um, projects that were supposed to have been done were just stopped immediately. You know, LucasArts was disbanded, it was closed, it shut down and uh, ceased to exist. And I don't really know if I buy into the whole Disney Star Wars. I think Star Wars is always going to be Lucasfilm. But I think it's the people that maybe Disney hires. Perhaps they have a di di different vision of Star Wars and a... Um, their level of control on the stories there perhaps should be reviewed maybe a little bit more, such as, you know, guys like Dave Filoni, who shouldn't just be focusing on The Mandalorian or the animated series uh, of Clone Wars or Rebels or the next one that comes after that. But I, th I feel like Dave Filoni should be basically who George was. I think he should be, I, th I think he should have Kathleen Kennedy's job. I really should. Uh, I, re I really do think that. And maybe he's not qualified to, you know, run the business side of it because he's a creative guy. 
but that's why you you know you hire someone to cover the business side while you cover all the creative decisions but to have one person covering the creative decisions and the business side i think it won't work right and i think that's why there's such an issue today in star wars is because you have um some people call them the purists the george lucas era and then you have the the other era the new era i just call it star wars altogether but i think you know if, if i'm seven-year-old me is is watching these movies i would see a major discrepancy between um one to six and seven to nine i would see a, a major shift in what happened so i think there's obviously something to be said there and i don't think we should be continue to be pushing it under the rug and just um you know ignoring it or saying oh don't be bashful don't be hateful it's like I, f I feel it's the people who are so hateful that really ruin the whole ability to have a conversation about Star Wars and talk about these things. I think it's those kind of people that really ruin the fun for everyone. Um, so this isn't where the fun begins because now it's hard to even have a discussion about Star Wars. And on the other side of the coin, it's the same people that very aggressively shut down anyone who has anything to say about the sequels or anything like that or where Star Wars is going, who also ruin the fun. So it takes two to tango here, you know? And I think there can't be one without the other. So <sighs> then you have me, and I'm just kind of... I know where I stand, but I'm trying to convey my voice in a way that isn't hateful and it's not... Um, overly praising it's just I don't want to say neutral because I'm neutral but it's from a point where I try to understand things from my point of view and from the point of view of a, just a general fan not someone who's just uh, elitist and saying that oh anything George Lucas Star Wars is great anything in Disney Star Wars is bad blah 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 uh, or you know this new era of Star Wars I just look at it kind of from a point of view of, of someone who just likes Star Wars, you know, um, not branding it with a certain uh, tag of who created it. And if this person created it, then I'm going to hate it indefinitely. Right. So, uh, you know, Disney owned Star Wars. They made The Mandalorian. I think The Mandalorian is one of the best shows ever made. You know, they made The Clone Wars season seven. I think it's the best Clone Wars that we've ever had. So that being said, I mean, you know, they made Rogue One and all that. And I liked The Force Awakens. And I also liked Episode 9 for what we got from Episode 8. So it's like you got to pick and choose, you know, your, your battles kind of. But at the end of the day, I really feel that there's a total discrepancy with Star Wars in general right now. And I think if we had more people like Dave Filoni on board and overlooking all of the creative decisions at Star Wars. And I think there wouldn't be such a discrepancy. I think things would be, you don't see anyone complaining about the Mandalorian. You don't see anyone complaining about Rebels season seven. You don't see anyone complaining about Jedi Fallen Order. Um, the people behind those projects need to keep doing that, need to keep making more things like that. And I know that the Lucasfilm story group is a bunch of very talented people. I just think that sometimes the certain people maybe above them who give the go-ahead or not um, on certain things need to take a back seat sometimes to the guys like Dave Filoni or guys on the guys or girls on the the Lucasfilm story group who know more of the story of Star Wars and don't, don't just know the business side of everything see what I'm trying to say here so that's my view on that that's what I think It's very easy to just be bashful and to just say, you know, um, ah, like I, this sucks or that, you know, I hate this or I hate that. But at the end of the day, you know, you have guys like Dave giving these these ceremonies, giving these these beautiful speeches of what Star Wars really is. And you can't help but realize that this is someone that really understands the story that George left behind. And, you know, George isn't eternal. As, as you know, knock on wood, I, I hope he lives for another thousand years. But I hope that Dave will continue the legacy, you know. Um, it, it's, it's weird to get emotional over a man you've never met, thinking about him dying. 
You know, it's, it's weird because he's shaped my life in so many ways and inspired me in so many ways, right? So I just, I, I, I appreciate what he's built and his story and his legacy and all that stuff. And I want to see it respected and I want to see it to continue because it's fun. And what Dave said at the very end there about hope uh, uh, and uplifting, I'm going to try to replay it here, uh, is very important. Through selfless action. So George has this hopeful story, and it's something that he's reiterated most times I've seen him, uh, you know, after we've been making things uh, without him, is remember to make these stories hopeful. Mm. Remember to give that to kids because they really need it. And so that's, that's just something to keep in mind. Did I bring us down? Wow. Okay, that that huh. So that's something I think is very important is to make sure these stories are, let's, let's pause it on Luke here. Um, these stories are up, uplifting, right? So we all have our own struggles in life and um, I don't know what your backgrounds are or you know, someone, someone might be going through something very tough and we need these stories to be uplifting. We need things that raise us higher, not bring us down and give us hope and, and that's something that George always did, I feel like, especially with the end of episode six and that's why he made Luke not turn to the dark side. There was a version where he was, you know, it was talked about where he was going to put on Vader's mask and say that now I'm Vader. But he felt that was too dark and he kept it loving. He kept it beautiful and symbolic of happiness and hope and that no matter, you know, what your path was in life, no matter if you made a deal with the devil like Anakin did, you can always redeem yourself and you can always change. And in the end, you can be the hero. So that's, it's a beautiful story, you know, and I think it's something that should be cherished. And I think it's a legacy that uh, should continue to be told the way Dave Filoni is telling it now. So uh, I'd love to see him in control more so and uh, make more projects from his very creative, brilliant mind. Um, I'm going to read a couple of super chats here and then uh, see what else you guys have to say and then we can end the video with that. So um, if you're if you're just starting this video, please go back, watch the whole thing. Because uh, it's just 30 minutes. How the heck have I been talking for 30 minutes? This is ridiculous. Yo, Theory, can you react to Revenge of the Sith trailer Force Awakens style on YouTube? It will give you chills. Sure, some other time. What do you think of them making Fallen Order movies from the game? That'd be great. Would you do a What If Ahsoka told the Jedi Council about what Maul said event? Yes, I will. What was... Just, just wondering if you have any updates on Vader Episode 2. Take your time. We're all behind you. Thank you, buddy. I'll make a video about it eventually. Love your video, Star Wars 3. Keep up the videos. I think it's a great interview, and I agree with everything he says, but the issue is that the inspiration does not come across the audience on its own in the movie. You have to hear this first. It does. Well, this encapsulated, this, this refined it for me. It really made it interest more interesting to me than before. And, and, you know, we always wondered, you know, what if Qui-Gon survived? What if Qui-Gon saved Anakin, you know, from Order 66, from turning to the dark side and all that by being alive and, and beating Maul? But now it really implements the fact that in canon, anything from Dave's mouth, I believe, is canon, um, that if Qui-Gon had survived, then he would have been truly the father figure that Anakin needed. And in the end, Anakin just needed the proper father figure. And Obi-Wan was not it. It really all falls on Obi-Wan's fault. <laughs> Can we get a Filoni episode 789 version? He is the chosen one. Also, what do you think Qui-Gon was thinking while meditating before he died? He's probably doing some battle meditation. So he's probably just calming his mind a little bit. And trying to envision his next moves. I don't think there's too much to take from that. Um, it's probably just trying to see into the force or, or, or move with the force as the force wills it. And George could have made this message more obvious. Well, that's, that's George though. You know, he does things like this. And I think there are so many more relics within Star Wars that we probably don't understand. And if we got to sit down with them and talk with them, um, it would be <laughs> pretty revolutionary, man. It would be pretty cool. I love how Dave just stopped at the end of episode six and didn't continue into the sequels. The Skywalker saga was already complete. Well, that was the thing, and and someone e uh, emailed. I saw this on Reddit. Someone um, messaged George's secretary or something like that, or um, I don't know. Yeah, his secretary, or some, and 
asked something to do with the sequels and then the response was i forgot where the letter is the response was from his secretary and it's stamped with lucasfilm it was cool uh and this is very recent i think and it was stamped with um this long nice thing thank you for your letter blah 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 we're going to send you some stickers from revenge of the sith or something and i'm like damn why don't i get one of those um love some of the stickers from revenge of the sith and anyways one of the things on there was um we George feels the story ended with episode 6. So obviously the sequels weren't his story really because they they discarded them and I think that in part is one of the reasons though he wasn't at the premiere. Which is sad to me, but do you think Dave would remake the sequel trilogy? I don't think anyone's going to remake the sequel trilogy just like anyone can't remake the prequels or the originals. Dave Filoni should be the CEO of Lucasfilm. You know, I think he should be governing the story, uh, or all the stories that go out at Lucasfilm. I think he's the man. Love your videos. Thanks, Dictator D uh, Steve. Appreciate it, man. I think I read all your guys' super chats, right? Yeah. Okay. Well, um, go watch the whole thing on uh, Disney Plus if you guys have it. Um, this is a very enlightening conversation. I, I really appreciate Dave Filoni's uh, words and little tidbits that he sprinkles here and there. And this was by far the most eloquent and detailed explanation of Star Wars as a whole. If anyone doesn't understand Star Wars, they should just go watch the last six minutes of episode two of the Disney Gallery, Mando, whatever. Because it really explains everything. Things that I, I didn't even know. No one knew, right? So I, I'm sure there are so many things we don't know, and I, I can't wait to see more of them and, and all that. So gaming channel time. Uh, yeah, we'll be on the gaming channel probably in a couple hours or so. Do something like that. Is it too late to audition for a Jedi Invader episode 2? No, it's not too late, but um, uh, yeah, I'll have to make an announcement eventually. Okay, guys, I love you. Thank you all for joining. Uh, still 5,600 of you here. If you could hit that like button, that'd be great. But at the end of the day, I really hope that you took something away from this conversation that we had and also what what Dave said here because I think it's monumental I think it's really a game changer with how we see Star Wars it's a game changer with how I see Star Wars now so thank you for joining the discussion and uh, I love you all see you in the next video tomorrow's fan fiction will drop I can't wait for you guys to see it it'll be a full part there's no part one or part two and um, it's going to take place in the original trilogy but uh, it'll be very cool very very cool at least I think so May the force be with you. See you guys.